Hi, my name is Neil. Welcome to Reptile for You. Today we're going to be working on these bits here. Now we're going to try combine all these and make a reptile biting chamber because I've been wanting to do this for a while because we don't really get much sun here in the UK. So when we do, it's good to go reptile biting. But I'd like something I could use all year round, especially having all this yellow apple stuff last time. So let's see how we get on with putting this together. And building something sort of like blue peter style if you know what that is so without further ado let's crack on <laughs> So let's begin this mad Blue Peter style build. So the first thing we're going to do is to glue all the inside of the box with some spray glue and then we're going to glue the foil directly onto the inside of the box to allow the light in theory to bounce around the objects. So let's crack on. Next we did the same with the tray. Now this tray was designed to sit inside and hold the fluid. The reason I did it in the tray separately was because it's easy to clean out then and it means I don't have to turn the box inside out. I can just pull that tray out and clean it out. Next, I use some foil tape to stick around the edges of the top around the box. Now this secured the foil on the inside, but also tidied the job up. Now I'm applying some foam tape around the top edge. In theory, I should be able to clamp the lid down with these metal clamps, which I bought, and this should provide a better seal because really the box needs to be airtight.
Next came the most difficult part, actually cutting a hole in the box, well in the lid, to fit the UV light. Now the UV light was a 100 watt floodlight and as I was cutting the plastic it was cracking a lot. But in the end I managed to do it and I managed to position and secure the light in place with some silicon and some tape. Next it was time to put the objects in the box. Now they sat on top of other clear boxes so I had some glasses and some clear boxes turned upside down which allowed the object to sit above the liquid. Then the liquid was poured underneath and the whole idea was it evaporates and hydrogen peroxide de yellows the plastic over time. Let's hope it works.
So you made it to the end of the video and here's the results. You can see there's a big difference before. This mouse was very yellow. The Amiga was yellow as well. And you can see there is a big difference. Now the method he used was the vapor method where you fill the tray in the bottom with some hydrogen peroxide and the vapor basically goes up and it de-yellows it. And it seems to have worked. Doesn't seem to be as quick as the cream method. Well, that should work with the cream as well. So maybe I'll try the cream method in the box as well. But it does work, which is a bonus. So you can see the difference in the pictures. So that's it for now. If you're here for the first time, please hit the like button. And please hit the subscribe button. We're nearly up to a 1,000 subscribers now. So that's really well done to everybody who's subscribed. And thank you very much. And drop me a comment down below, even if it's hello. I do try to answer every comment. And for now, I'll see you again next time on Retro For You. See you soon, guys. Bye.